right, so I'm getting ready to get started. I just wanted to share with you something that I found online. The link will be below for my Amazon link. Um, it is a monster size silicone mat. That's what this black is. It's two feet by three feet, which is wonderful for some of my larger paintings. And I can also pull the pieces off of it that have dripped and put them aside just in case I want to make some jewelry with them. So I'll, again, I'll put this link below so you can check that out. Now I'm preparing my canvas. I like to spray the back of it with a little bit of water, just a light dusting. What that does is as it dries, it tightens up your canvas. So it's tight like a drum. So if you see things like this edge right here, those, those may require a little additional water and a little additional time to dry. And then what I do is I'm putting masking tape on the back. It takes care of some of those drips that I'm having. And also I leave that on until I decide if this is a piece that I'm going to put resin on and pull that off after. I'm going to trim the edges and make sure you've got square edges for your paint. And then for this painting, I'm using push pins. Some people use the table pyramids. I like the push pins because then I'm consistently on an even level field every time I pick up and put my canvas back down. All right, so well, I'm going to let this dry just a little bit and we'll get started. All right, so I have most of my paints mixed up. As you can see, my corners are getting nice and tight. They're still a little bit moist. You can see the moisture spot. Um, but that doesn't matter because that will not affect my painting. So I do want to um, go through the kinds of paints that I have. I have a red that is a mixture of a couple different brands. I have white, and that is, let me go grab that, sorry. It is a True Flow acrylic. This is the blue label, True Flow acrylic, but I'm using the white. I used up that, that bottle, so I went ahead and threw that away. I'm also using some Deco Art Extreme Sheen Metallic Paint in Deep Sapphire. I am using a mixture of golds. I have a lighter version. I do have a darker version. Now this one is Nicole's Craft Studio and it is not a mixture, but it is the Nicole's Craft Studio. Then I'm also using some paint pigment powders. Let me show you those labels. These powdered pigments I like to use with inks. I'm using them today with our acrylics. So I mixed up the pearl and it's going to look kind of silver. What I do is I place pigment powder directly with my flow mix. You'll see the flow mix recipe below. And this is sky blue. You can see the consistency of the powder. Be careful you don't inhale that. It's a very fine powder. Just put the powder in. Mm -hmm. And I just put some flow mix in and mix it around till it is the correct color that I want. So I'm going to take a minute, get this mixed up, and put my gloves on, and then we'll get started. See how nice that mix up? And we do want a little bit of a runny consistency, by the way, for this open cup pour. I do want to say you'll hear some birds. The windows are open. It's a beautiful day. I think it's going to get ready to rain here in a little bit, but for now it's beautiful. Um, but I do want you to know that when I'm finished with this painting, I will close everything up and make sure there's no fans running because what happens to your paints if you um, leave your paints in an area where there's a lot of, of fans, you'll see some cracking in the top layer because everything is drying unevenly. So I do two things. I turn off all the fans and I actually put a wet paper towel near my painting so that there's some moisture in the air as I'm 
walking away and letting it go ahead and dry. So gloves on, let's get started. We're going to get the background in white today. I know some of you watch and I do a lot of black backgrounds. I'm going to do a white today. Try not to get too flaggy of a theme I've added. So I, oh, I like to give my metallics at least a last minute stir because sometimes they thicken up while I'm busy doing other things, getting things ready. There's a lot of prep in getting these videos together. So yes, nice mixture that's a little runny, comes off your stick pretty quickly, has a tiny mound that disappears right away. All of that should be ready to go. Now I did put a little bit of oil in my red only. I don't need it in any of the metallics. Now I've seen people who like to use the three in one. It's pretty watery. So I don't like to use that in my paintings. I use the silicone pouring oil from uh, US Art Supply sometimes in my paintings. And then following one of my favorite artists online, uh, Gina DeLuca, she uses a hair serum. I'm trying this today in my red. I don't know if it's going to produce any cells because I'm just now getting this started. And this is a John Frieda Free Frizz Ease hair serum. So we'll see. It has a dimethylcone or a dime. It has a silicone base. So we'll see how that works. All right. So let me scrape the sides. Make sure I've got it mixed in nicely. Beautiful. All right, so I'm just really going to kind of cover my canvas, saving some white. May need that later. Now, some people will, will go ahead like this with their white and actually move it around. I like to just go ahead, let's just get a layer. Then we'll get some extra in the middle. to have a bath of water off to the side so I can throw my stir sticks in it right away. Sometimes that helps me to be able to... All right, so you can see it's all white. We've got the extra going. I'm going to just choose where I might place my cup. Let's start up here. Now, one of the things that I've watched other artists do and I think it's important also, is you want to start by kissing the edges of your cup. With some white all the way around. I like to make it a little bit of a seal. And that's before you start your other colors. And I'm actually I'm going to start with some blue. I'm going to get rid of my stir sticks for right now because I think I'm going to use a good bit of this, but not right away. So there's some blue. Next to that blue, I'm going to put some of my sky blue. My pearl or silver. Yeah, it looks like it might be a little thick. It might end up in the bottom. I'm going to put some white next to that. And 
and then let's try our red. Um, you may not be able to see this on camera, but this is a mixture of two different reds, and it is kind of a blood red. So we'll see how this works with a little bit of the dark gold beside it. Hmm, starting to come up. Let's do a little edge of this soft gold, lighter color. Let's let us move a little bit this way. Beautiful. This is a very lightweight cup, so it may have a little bit of a different effect than some people's paintings you've seen. Very lightweight. I'm going to put a little... Just layering the different ones in. Dark gold, the light gold. Silver or pearl. Ooh, got a little drip over here. Now I always try to keep a um, set of tweezers nearby. I don't know if you see this, but I have accidentally dripped something in there. And that's not even a drip, it's pieces of something. I'm going to get rid of those right away before. They spawn into something you don't want. Alright, I'm gonna go for an ending in gold. And we're gonna go see if we can get this to move a little more. Loving these colors. Bubbles out. And then we'll move it on out. It looks like the air may have come from that light blue, but it's looking great. Let's let's move it. I love stretching this one out right here. Look at that. Moving it slowly.
Oh, I love how this is stretching. Just bring the weight of my cam paint back to the middle of the canvas. And I actually love this blue edge here. I might want to keep that. See all that? There we go. All right, we'll see what we have for corners here after I use the blow dryer. Now, I do see that I do want to bring this over the edge, but I didn't do that with my glove. I'm gonna do a little bit with there. All right. Now, I have a blow dryer that I have attached a funnel to with some duct tape. Just an easy tool, anybody can do that. And I do have the ability to have a cool shot in here. See this? So I wanna use that. You don't wanna use a high heat because you will cook your paint. So let's get, let's blow it a little. Um, bring some of that paint around the edge. And if you don't have enough paint, grab some from your drips. Some negative space that I actually like. Remember my silicone was only in my red, so I should expect to see a little bit more cells here on the red if the paint's not too thick on it. And so this is our finished painting, and I'm going to go ahead and Zoom you in a little closer so you can see some of the beautiful colors. Some of the designs that pop up are always amazing to me. And on this side of our canvas, we've got this red. Oh, it's just fabulous. All right, I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you have a chance to try this at home.